Good evening. The government is under pressure from its own backbenchers, particularly MPs who turned the red wall blue at the last election with Boris Johnson's levelling up promise to extend the £20 uplift on universal credit. One Northern Tory MP, John Stevenson, said the uplift, worth £1,000, brought in by the Chancellor last March for a year, was a lifesaver. Earlier tonight, all but a handful of Tories followed the Prime Minister's instruction to abstain on a Labour motion for an extension, but... Newsnight has learned there are various options under consideration at the Treasury and we'll be discussing how the Chancellor can support the vulnerable through the pandemic without tying his hands on what he can spend to kickstart the economy. Well, I'm joined by our political editor, Nick Watt. So, Nick, what have you actually learned tonight? Well, Kirsty, the government knows that it's got to get this one right because we really are at a pivotal moment. So support now is still needed because we have a largely shuttered economy. So well, you heard Helen Thomas say there that people, you know, the OECD, the IMF, the World Bank are saying now is not the time to draw back. Where do you think we should be on this extension, first of all, to the universal credit uplift? Well, well, this week, the world's eyes are on Washington again, still unnaturally quiet since the insurrection at the Capitol, which led to Donald Trump's second impeachment. For that alone, he will go down in history books. He'll be absent from the inauguration on Wednesday when Joe Biden and Kamala Harris take the oaths of office. And we're there this week, too, to examine the challenges, the security challenges and political challenges ahead. Emily. Emily in Washington. The vaccine is the way out. The words of the Health Secretary, Matt Hancock, today. But it's not the only way out. Mass testing programmes, for which £100 billion have been earmarked, are designed to find people who may be unaware they're infected and then for them to self-isolate. And areas where the incidence is found to be low may be released earlier than others from the most stringent of restrictions. But how effective is mass testing, especially with the quick lateral flow test, which delivers results in 20 minutes? Newsnight has been to the London borough of Enfield to find out. Our health correspondent, Deb Cohen, has had exclusive access to the results of their mass testing programme. Now, he is, after Mikhail Gorbachev and Vladimir Putin, the best-known political figure in Russia and beyond, and by some way, Putin's foremost tormentor. Now, Alexei Navalny, the most prominent face of the opposition to Putin, is back on Russian soil after his near-fatal poisoning and straight back into a 30-day jail term for supposedly violating his probation when he was recovering for five months in Germany. The Foreign Secretary, Dominic Raab, today called Navalny's detention disgraceful. And today the campaigner urged Russians to get out on the streets and protest, not for him and his plight, but for themselves against Putin's regime. Well, joining me now is Vitaly Milanov, a politician in Vladimir Putin's United Russia Party. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, President Putin's running scared of Alexei Navalny, isn't he? No, uh, uh, I... Sh the point was, apparently, he was ar arrested uh, because in a way he violated his, pro his probation. But the truth was, he was for five months in Germany recovering from a Novacek attack. And isn't uh, Sergei Navalny a complete embarrassment for the Russian security services? After all, he apparently interviewed one FSB officer who allegedly admitted involvement in his poisoning. 